All right, are we ready to begin? So here we have a pattern, okay? And uh, one is for the cone and the other is for the brim. I have them over here on black paper. So we'll see if we can get these posted on there for you. And so what I did is I just went through and I just started cutting them out. So you just follow the line around, like it says on this one, to cut, okay? And then I am now just cutting for the tabs to go around the brim of the hat, okay? And then when you are done with this, then you will start to cut out the brim. I'm cutting the tabs to go around the brim of the hat. So it depends on what size you decide to use, but just know that bigger the hat, probably more baking soda and vinegar you're going to need. So just be cautious, okay? So once I got that done, Sorry, let me get that out of the way. I just fold it right where it says, and then wrapped it around. Just like so. And I tape mine, so make sure and get your tape. You can glue it if you'd like, but for saving time, I am just going to tape it. And it will look prettier if you do um, glue it and stuff. And now you can use different materials if you want your child to feel different things, like foam or something. So there's your hat, and you can get your little tabs bent. like so. Now, let's cut out our brim. To do the center, I just usually just cut right here. I just make a stab at it. And then I just go through and just cut. If your child is old enough to use scissors, this is a great way to use their fine motor skills. Get them strong. I've been told that I cannot cut very well, so maybe I should have practiced a little more. All right, so there's your brim. So you're gonna place the brim over the top of the cone like so. Okay, and push it down as far as you can. You're gonna flip it over, it may come off. So you can just push it up and then just start taping the brim along the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mainly because it's going to get wet. And there's your hat right there. Okay, now let's move on to making our 
vinegar and baking soda mixture or baking soda. Okay, now we're going to move on to using our baking soda and our water. Now in the directions it says four cups of baking soda and one cup of water. However, I'm not gonna do that much. I really don't know how much I have in this right now. So you can have your child fill the baking soda. Ooh, and if you're using cold water, you can definitely feel that. Okay, so I have added my water and baking soda together. And before you add the water, you can always just let them feel it. And then when they add the water, just let them mix it up. Okay, so it'll be just like so. Then you're going to take your green food coloring, add a squirt if you like. You can make it as dark or as light as you would like, and then you just mix it up. Now, if you're worried about your fingers turning green, like I just did, you can put on gloves, but the whole point is to let your child feel the difference and see does the food coloring make a difference in this? Did it change how it felt? To me, it's just neat to see it turn a different color. Okay. So you're gonna wanna mix that up really well, or your child can mix it up really, really well, just like so. Okay. Alrighty, so I do recommend putting it into a bowl or something so it doesn't get everywhere. It's kind of contained, all right? So there we have that. I should have used the gloves. Okay, so I forgot we should have made little faces. I don't have cauldrons. Uh, the directions also had called for cauldrons, but I don't have any. So I just took construction paper, just made little circles. I drew a little face on it, okay? And then what I would do is, if your child would like to, they can use their hands. I just scoop some of the mixture into her head, just like so. Because we are melting a witch. Sorry, just mixing this up a little more. My fingers did not get it all earlier. So, just mix it up, put it inside of there. You can add as little or as much as you want. And you can make as many of these as you would like. So, once we got that, just put your little hats on, just like so, okay? Now, 
Let me see if I can get you a little closer to seeing what happens next. Now you take your little dropper. Uh, you might have a bigger one at home. This is all we have up here for now. So fill it with vinegar. I did put it in the bowl. I did pour vinegar into here and I just kind of softened it up. And now we're going to place it, squeeze it and see what happens. So I think the only thing with these little eyedroppers is there's just not enough vinegar to get it going. So what you can do is just pour the vinegar over the top and see what happens. Maybe if you have a spoon or something, you can pour more into it. And you can see, it's just kind of dissolving. And then you can do it with the next one. Ooh, that was a good one. And so on this last one, I'm gonna cut a hole the tip of the hat so we can see what it will look like. Well, we can hear it. Is she melting? Well, sort of. Let's check out these other ones here. Look at all that fizzing action going on. So, you can, it's a great problem solving, having your child figure out, hey, exactly how much to use of vinegar and baking soda and water. I've never used water before, but that's what the direction said on this. Okay, and then when it's all done, she melted. <coughs> this program is all about sensory. So what did it sound like whenever you added the vinegar to it? Can you hear that? You can hear it. So what does it feel like? Once you take off the paper or you take it out of the cauldron, what does that Wicked Witch feel like now? So it allows your child to practice scientific strategies and create problem solving. This allows your child to practice scientific strategies and creative problem solving. And by allowing them to use the dropper or cutting, they also get to fine tune their motor skills. So, let us know how this worked out for you. Hope you enjoyed it.